Are there any common uh, conditions uh, that you see more frequently and does it vary according to the age group? Yes. So we have to divide hip pain um, in various age groups because um, hip pain can be seen both from right from birth to uh, okay. elderly people. So uh, in um, infancy, you can get pain uh, from infections in the hip uh, when the child stops moving the leg and is constantly crying and have a high temperature or from uh, a dislocated hip, uh, what we call DDH or developmental uh, dysplasia of the hip, uh, where there is a deformity or uh, one of the legs look different to the other. So there should be a strong suspicion when uh, children are born in infancy, there should be high suspicion when the, the child doesn't develop normally or doesn't walk uh, or move uh, their legs symmetrically. Um, as we uh, go, uh, as we grow upwards um, uh, in young children, you can get conditions called Perthes or uh, Perthes disease of the hip where there is a disruption of the blood supply to the growth uh, uh, plate and people and then young kids can present with limping, um, with pain in the, in the thigh or in the groin region. Uh, in adolescents, um, in certain conditions, um, you can get slipped upper femoral epiphysis or where the growth plate can slip out of its position and then kids come with acute pain in the hip. Um, and uh, sometimes it can be quite late, sometimes they present very early and so there should be high suspicion when, they, when adolescents present with pain in front of their thigh or in the groin. Um, these days, not these days, but I think it's gone through the ages, uh, we are seeing young um, females especially um, with pain in the groin and in the thigh and this is due to a vitamin D deficiency. So most of them tend to be girls who are uh, covered when they go out of the house or generally tend to be in the house or even if they go out they're fully covered and even the school uh, where they're going the, these schools don't tend to have playgrounds for kids to play uh, outside in the sun. So if you don't get exposed to the sun at an early age, um, uh, you can get vitamin D deficiency and this can cause weakness in the bone and generally we see um, tiny fractures uh, in the hip region and sometimes they can com the fractures can complete uh, and become complete and um, people stop walking and they come in absolute agony. So it is uh, very important that children get exposed to the sun. Um, Going up uh, towards teenage and uh, young adolescents, uh, uh, these um, young adults um, can present with AVN of the hip, which is basically avascular necrosis, or again, circulatory issues with the, the ball of the hip. And many of them tend to be um, due to steroid abuse because they might have certain conditions and doctors are prescribing steroids. And of late, we have also seen uh, a lot of AVN in young people. Um, when they were given steroids during COVID infections. So this, has, uh, this came to almost epidemic proportions in, in India uh, because very high doses of steroids were being given. So um, again, we should have high suspicion of AVN in young people um, and get uh, an MRI done as soon as possible. Uh, hip pain can also be due to uh, conditions called uh, rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis and we see young people with severe pain in the hip. Um, moving on, uh, you can get trauma, falls, this can cause hip fractures, uh, again presenting with um, inability to walk or severe pain in the hip joint. Uh, moving on in age, um, in the, uh, especially in Europe and uh, not, not that common in India, but you can get osteoarthritis uh, in the hip and again, uh, hip pain is uh, very common uh, in these countries uh, where they end up having hip replacements. Um, as we get into old age, uh, if you don't look after yourself, your bones can get very weak and osteoporotic and people can present with hip fractures um, with relatively minor faults. I may be missing a few, but by and large, uh, these are the conditions um, which can cause hip pain.